Micah Morris, what's up, brother? How you doing? Nate Edwardson. <laughs> oh man, I'm great. I tell you what, I'm 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 doing really good right now. Yeah. Good. I, it's an honor. It's an honor. You know my name because this time last year, I feel like it was like the first time we really ever chatted. It was like brand new, whatever. And now, like we're homies. You're my boy. I love you. It's crazy. It's crazy what a year can do. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy what a year can do for everyone. Um, <laughs> Uh, you certainly uh, found your niche and uh, made some pretty cool stuff and created some uh, really, you know, you keep everybody up to date really, really well, which is nice. And I, you know, every now and then I, t I, I tune in or I'll see something. And I'll be like, Oh, I didn't know that. So it's like, you know, you're, you're the guy for the YouTube. Yeah. I yeah, yeah. appreciate it. Yeah. I mean, yeah, man, listen, I want to, I want this space to be as big as possible. And I think it's been crazy to watch really what I think you and Grant sort of started almost a year ago with like this just boom in YouTube golf, you know, like by you guys going out on your own and then so many more solo creators, like within that time, like Busta Jack's gone pretty big. I feel like Brian bros have also kind of exploded. I think a large part due to your and Grant's collaborations with those two groups, like the YouTube golf space in general. I mean, Grant started a teaching channel, Rick Shields started his hit channel. Like there's so much growth going on. What has it felt like over the last year to kind of have all these new avenues, all these new creators you're collabing with. What has that all been like? Um, it's really good. It's really, it's really fun. And this year has been, it's, it's been difficult and it's been like a lot of different things. It's ultimately, it's been amazing. There's been a lot of growth for me and my channel, which has been cool, maybe a little bit slower than previous years, but I also posted less than I have in previous, previous years, um, which is okay. And I think they're like, I took a, a pretty good amount of time especially when i took like in september i think i posted one video which i haven't done that for the last like three years i haven't only posted one video in a month but there was a couple months last year where i was just like i needed to take a, i needed to take some time off and i needed to just like kind of re just kind of regroup in my mind and and with my team just figure out like what are we doing and like kind of what's next and, and kind of what path are we going on so all that being said, collaborating with Grant Busta and Brian Bros has been, I mean, those, those have been the most fun trips that I, that we went on this year and Grant's just taken off like a rocket ship. And that dude is just, he, he's really got it all when it comes to being a YouTuber. And I always just sit back and I'm just like, dude, you're just crushing it. And I, I love watching what he does. And he's so, he's so into it and he's so just like, smart and when it comes to thumbnails and titles like he just he puts so much time in and he deserves he deserves what he has on youtube which is just really really neat and busta jack those guys they're kind of like my i don't know like i started with those guys when they first started on youtube pretty much like they had like 40k subs or something when i first filmed with them and we've just gotten really close outside of, of YouTube, which is really, really neat. And there's some of my favorite people to hang out with. And we, we do a lot of, a lot of cool stuff, but, and then Brian bros, they're the OGs and Wesley and George, I have a ton of respect for them. And George has George this year on YouTube was really cool to see because in the previous years he had some, you know, slow years where he wasn't doing quite as good. And to see him really pop off this year and, I mean, not only pop off on YouTube, but just pop off on professional golf. And it's just cool, man. He's worked so hard. Same with Wesley. Like, they both just have worked so hard. And to see that start to, to pay off and really pay off this year was, was really neat. So there's a lot of growth for everyone. I mean, and not just, like, those four groups, me and those three the other creators, but, like, everyone in the YouTube space, the golf space is just – it's really neat. And I think the next couple of years are going to be really cool to see what it turns into. For sure. Did it shock you, you six, at how well received your collaborations were initially? Um, I don't think it really shocked me. I feel like there, obviously, you know, there's two different really established groups out there, and that's Good Good and Bob Does Sports, and everyone watches them for like very specific reasons, and. I mean, when it comes to like R6, we're not even, we're not even a group, but like when we film together, it's probably, I mean, it's entertaining, but it's like everyone's a scratch golfer or better, which is cool. And it's different. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that 
like we're just we're kind of in a little bit different lane like it's mm -hmm. everyone's very serious everyone's very competitive and i know all the other groups they are too but you know it's just it's a little bit different and when we film together it's just it's very competitive and me and wesley like i always say like i'm not near i'm nowhere near good enough to trash talk him like i do but it just it just gets good like it just creates a good like environment for com competitive camaraderie and it's just cool like i just i that's where i thrive is when i'm able to just like trash talk and have fun and you know hit good shots every now and then and i mean i i think that i ca i can beat wesley but i have to like be 100 percent on and he has to be like having a little bit of an average day but you know maybe two out of ten times i'm gonna i'm gonna give it a shot but it doesn't mean that we're not gonna have fun and i'm not gonna you know trash talking like i can beat him <laughs> absolutely I, I dude i think you hit the nail on the head with like your guys's value prop as a group and that's why i think it's been so successful is because you do have a natural friendship with all those guys and the banter is great but like it is the first youtube golf group where everybody like you said is a scratch or better like i think innately the value prop with good good when you and grant were a part of it and same with now you know having brought in like luke and ben and all those people is like they have good golfers but they also have more relatable golfers and then bob does sports is like way more on the relatable side like obviously fp is good mm -hmm. but again it's more about the comedy it's not so both those groups and good goods more challenge based a lot of the time whereas you guys it's been a lot more like semi-serious stroke play-esque content with good golfers while yeah. still having banter and so at least for me, I, I would felt it was very like refreshing and like interesting because I've always said the biggest challenge for people coming into the space is to find something unique. And for a group coming into the space, that's an even bigger challenge because you got to have six people all finding something unique. And I think you guys have done it. My question is after how well those videos have done, how much fun you guys have had on the collaborations, was there ever any conversations of like making it official, like forming some sort of entity between you six and like having it on one communal channel or has it always just been like we'll just collaborate on each other's channels going forward um gosh depending on how i answer, how i answer this there's so many different ways you're going to take this video um <laughs> no i think that right now we all just really like having our own brands and like coming together and creating content on each other's channels so whether it's the youtube majors which grant did one i did one and brian bros did one and then we're going to do one for busta jack mm -hmm. and then we'll probably kind of start that over next year but I, I don't know right now just collaborating filming on each other's channels we just really like that and mm -hmm. i think that you know we'll we'll see what happens in the future but we are really happy with where we're at and we have some, you know, more trips planned as a, you know, our three channel, four channel, three channels, four channels, whatever it is. It's confusing. Me too. Right? I always say the wrong number um, too. <laughs> you know, where we're going to go and we're going to create content and, and just do, do really cool stuff. And then, you know, videos will be on Grant's mind and Busta Jack. So right now that's where we are and we really like it. And, you know, we'll see what happens. I think I would personally be surprised if you guys felt uh, ever. I think it's just a, a common thing because of the history of YouTube golf, I guess, to be like, oh, I wonder yeah. if they're going to come together. But like, I think what you guys are doing, I've said in my videos, is a bit of an evolution on the group model. Not necessarily like it's better than what's currently being done or anything, but it's just different. And it allows all you guys who already have, because what's different about you guys is you guys all already have established channels. You've all come in with mm -hmm. like, you know, a real yep. presence. Whereas like when Bob the sports film sort of started, it's not like Joey had a channel. It's not like Bob really had much of a channel. It's not like FP had a channel. Yeah. So it makes sense to have one group thing, but because you guys all have your own business entities and whatever, and I think it makes a lot of sense to be able to be nimble and kind of do the collaborations the way you are. And I think you mm -hmm. reap a lot of the benefits without a lot of the, you know, potential muckiness of, of having to like actually form something together. Yeah. I mean, as soon as that happens, like everyone just has so much more responsibility and not that we couldn't handle that. It's just right now, everyone is going at a really good pace and we're all in different places. I mean, Busta Jackson, Texas and North Carolina and Florida. So it's like, you know, it, it just right now we, we really like the pace we're going at and doing these YouTube, um, doing these YouTube championships, you know, four times a year and, other stuff sprinkled in there it's it's just really good 
I love that. Speaking of Florida, let's take a step back from you two golf for a second, because obviously in the last year, you've moved down to Florida. You've been living in Jupiter. You do the Airbnb. You have a bunch of other stuff going on. So just talk to me about life in general since the move to Florida. How's it been? What's kind of new? Maybe stuff that, uh, you know, you got going on behind the scenes and all that. Yeah, I feel like since we moved here, I mean, I'm always I'm always looking to figure out how to grow outside of YouTube and we've had some really cool opportunities getting into real estate. Um, we have a coffee brand, we have a ball marker brand. We have, um, I'm working on this, another, uh, partnering with Mike Beery on creating a, you know, some different, some different things. And so just like l learning how to grow outside of YouTube and create a business out of this, I've put a lot of time and energy into that, which is really neat. And, you know, I just, there's, you, you can, when you're in this position, which I'm so thankful to be in and I never take it for granted, but like, you gotta be really careful on like, you can, the more I do, the more money I can make, but it's like how much it is enough. And like, at what point is it like, okay, you know, take time to be with your family, take time to take time off, learn how to rest, learn how to, how to be still, learn how to like enjoy being in the present moment instead of just like this constant hustle and it's great. But I think that just like this year, me and my wife both have like really taken time to like learn how, what a like really good work life balance means. Uh, and I think that's, that's really cool, but it's definitely very challenging. And so we've, we've challenged ourselves in a lot of ways, like outside of YouTube of, you know, how to like learning how to rest is a really hard thing for people. And, it's extremely valuable. And so there's just a lot of different things that we've done like on YouTube, but also outside of YouTube to really just enrich our life as a whole and not just like grow our YouTube channel, grow our, grow our YouTube channel and grow our finances. And those things are great, but there's so much more to life than that. And so we've really like, like I said, work life balance has been something we put a lot of time and energy into. So one thing I've always found interesting about you kind of on that vein is you have expressed this last year, a real like, you know, passion for business outside of YouTube and having YouTube not be your North star. And I feel like that's kind of been all YouTubers, I think, get put into this vein of like, this is the one thing, this is your identity, this is who you are. Is there any sort of like, I don't want to say existential, but like real thought that goes into like, you know, how you want to be known or seen, or is it just like you have these different passions and you want to pursue them? Like what, what's kind of the thought process behind expanding um, outside of just YouTube? Yeah. I mean, I think when I think about what I want to be known as it's, I don't want to be known as like just someone who is successful on YouTube and, you know, have made a lot of money. Like, I'm not saying those things are bad, but I want to be known as like, I want to be wealthy in all aspects of life. And that's something that me and my wife have put a lot of time into. I mean, ever like since the beginning of our, of our marriage and before that, like that's something we invested into. But now it's like when you, as you grow and as you make more money and as you have a, a bigger name and a bigger brand, like there's more responsibility that comes with that. So we have really just, felt that and like i said we want to be wealthy in in every aspect as aspect of our life from our marriage to our finances to our friendships our relationships and when people come into our life like i want them to to see that i want them to be able to experience that and experience it with us and so it's like do i want to make a lot of money of course but i don't want to be known because i made a lot of money i don't want to be known because i was a famous youtuber and i think that like obviously that comes with the territory of what I do, but when people come in, when they spend time with me, when they spend time with me and my wife, it's like I want to, I want to have much more of an impact than just being someone who is famous on YouTube or, you know, made a lot of money. And that that's probably, you know, my message right now, which is, you know, different than probably different than a lot of people, but you know, that's where that's where we're at. No, that's great, man. I mean, one of the most important things about being a YouTuber in any capacity is you have to enjoy your life and what you're doing. Otherwise, it reflects very poorly in the content if you're not. And so 
really at the end of the day, it's like whatever makes you happy, whether that's content, whether that's work life balance, whether that's having other things to pursue. So I think it's good that you've learned that. And I feel like along the same vein with other pursuits, the pro golf and playing golf at a high level and that whole pursuit, how has that then been brought? Because that's a whole I mean, we're talking we got YouTube, that's one full time job. We got you know, the property management, that's basically another full time job, you got the business and the brands, like, how has then adding what really is another full time job onto your plate been over the last year? And, and I'm, I'm assuming you must enjoy the breakup of things being able to do something different every once in a mm -hmm. while. But yeah, just talk to me about uh, about that whole pursuit as well, because it's it's definitely another beast in itself. Yeah, I mean, that's a that's a really good question. I think it's pretty fair. But I think that right now, I've just really tried to enjoy where I'm at in the present in the last couple months. And it's been, I think the content has kind of reflected it, which has been, it's been a nice, it's been a nice change, but just really focusing on where I'm at right now and <clears throat> everything that's right in front of me. And I still want to play golf at a high level. I still want to, you know, pursue professional golf. And I think that I kind of have the personality or the little bit of a, personality type to like put a lot of pressure on myself and you know want to want to be perfect in the, in the moment and so probably in the last couple of months i've just really decided like you know what i think that there is a lot of opportunity here i have i have time left i'm i'm still young a lot of golfers don't hit their prime until they're you know 34 35 and there's still there's still time left for me to do that and i think that like I said, I just put a lot of pressure on myself. Like it needs to be done right now. And if it's not done right now, then I'm going to like miss, miss my shot. And it's just like, bro, look at George Bryan. Like George Bryan's been grinded on YouTube for the last four years. And he's just now hitting his stride when it comes to like his golf game. And he's, I think he's 34, 35. Uh, and he's a great YouTuber and he's a great golfer. And he's doing both really well right now. And he's just been diligent in like what he's doing. You know, he's very consistent on YouTube. He's very consistent with practicing and, you know, over time that paid off. And so, yeah, just really kind of coming back into the present and saying like, let's, let's just make sure and do everything right in front of us really well. And, you know, we'll see where that leads. And so I think that just, yeah, having fun and practicing and not putting so much pressure on myself and, you know, kind of making fun of myself for how hard this year has been for like the level of golf that I played. I did, I did some really cool things, but you know, I didn't really perform well and that's okay at the end of the day. And there's a lot of negativity around that, but you know, everybody, everybody gets hate. Like hate is not exclusive to me. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Like if mm -hmm. you're online, you're going to get hate. And so it's like, mm -hmm. you know, just, just keep going and, and be consistent and, enjoy where i'm at and i think it's it's been really neat to see how that's kind of just started to kind of level the playing field i guess when it comes to what people expect and what people think i expect of myself which is is really neat yeah dude i mean i've thought this for a long time but like if you were to have come out and had the best year of golf of your life this year it would have been the biggest miracle on planet earth because of everything else you have going on yeah. you know like you start the year with like the biggest trip of all time, like a huge, like life changing decision, then a, a trip in the sense of like, you know, you're at TaylorMade, you're, you're doing the the unveiling posts and you're going, you're playing pro-ams, you're all around the world, you have all these big videos and then like the trickle off and the fall off and you're getting settled and like you have so much going on in your life and like it, there was so much distraction in a good way, but like, like you said, great opportunities. But as far as like then being able to go zone in and dial in on golf, like I don't think people understand how much harder it would be to perform with all of that going yeah. on. And then not to mention, obviously, you've been a very hot topic of discussion <laughs> over the last year. Like you said, you have yeah. <laughs> you have yeah. comments, you have this, you have that, that like you sound like you have a very good perspective on, which is great. And I'm happy to hear. But like at the same time, like that stuff. It, it gets in your brain every once in a while a little bit that can be annoying and like just how how different has the golf felt this year having just everything else in the back of your mind or at least just like you know oh, i gotta go fly to this place to do this club and then i gotta go fly and do this thing with taylor made da, 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 da. 
Um, it felt it's felt really really bad, uh, especially compared to previous years. Uh, and I think a lot of it has to do with what you're saying. Like there was so much going on behind the scenes that golf is a mental sport, and if you're not if you're not mentally clear, then it makes it really hard. And it wasn't like I I don't I wasn't like you know depressed or like so or like anxious about what was happening it's just there was so it was like so much was happening and so it was hard to it was hard to just really focus in and just kind of like play golf freely and it was kind of like that this entire year the last couple months has been really good and like i said just i've had fun and when i have fun and kind of get out of my own way like i think i can play with the best of them but any any time you i started to you know, kind of get in my own head and try to control what I was doing. It was just, I mean, I think it goes south for everyone, but I, it especially went went in a very bad direction for me. And so I think that I'm excited for next year just to kind of get back to playing golf and having fun and not putting a ton of pressure on myself. And the probably two years ago when I played in, I actually, like I won a pro tournament. I shot seven under in a one day event and I remember the video. Like, you know, I was just having fun and I, I wasn't like trying to put so much energy into just accomplish one thing. Um, and I know, I know that I can play at a high level. It's just, it's really like figuring out how to clear my head space and, and have fun on the golf course instead of put so much pressure on myself. <clears throat> With everything that's happened in the last year, I assume there's probably been a lot of like lessons along the way type thing. There's been a lot of change, a lot of development for you personally in business. What are some of the the lessons or the things you've learned that you want to move forward to 2024 with? Um, probably one of the biggest things is to to get rid of the hurry in my life, and that doesn't mean to like slow down and or like that doesn't mean to like stop growing the brand and stop continue to grow everything around me but it's like you don't have to hurry when you do those things and I, I think when you when you're constantly hustling so hard and you're trying to do so many things I don't think you do any of them well and so it's like if I have to you know not take certain brand deals or pass up per certain partnerships because I'm I want to do everything that I ha am doing really well, then I'm going to do it. And I said yes to a lot of things this year, which was, it was good, but I learned a lot from that. And so, yeah, probably the biggest number one thing going into next year is like, there's no need to hurry. It doesn't help you in any aspect of your life. Yeah, no, I think that's great, man. I think it's something we as content creators kind of struggle with for sure, because it's always like, that next video, that next big thing, that next, and you're kind of chasing next always. Mm -hmm. And it causes this rush. But like, I know personally, if I try to feel like every day is the weekend, which we have the luxury of a lot of the time is like kind of being more relaxed and creating our own schedules. You're not going to work less because I enjoy the things I do. So I'm still going to work the same, but it's just with less of that anxiety around it. And that anxiety usually for me causes me to make bad decisions mm -hmm. sometimes, most of the time, yeah. you know, and I think that's, that's something that's really important. And so how how has the brand side been over the last year? You, you talked about brand deals and stuff like that. And I know that's, you know, a, a, an important part of the business, but it can also, like you said, kind of weigh on you a little bit with time commitments or, you know, maybe I don't know if they're asking things of you and you have to go back and forth. Like how has what is your structure to brand deals like? Do you, you know, do you do you like doing making new partnerships? Do you like just having one or two kind of steady ones? And like, how has that evolved over the last year? Um, yeah. So when I first started on YouTube, I would do a lot of just like one off, um, one off brand deals. So, you know, they would pay X amount of dollars for 60 second ads in a YouTube video or in one YouTube video. And then like, you know, that was, that was it. Um, but I think this last year I've, the thing that I've really enjoyed is doing more long-term partnerships prefer like most of the time they're like a year long, which is the best. And mm -hmm. so I think that is probably the most, it's just a lot easier than like, if I do three or four one-offs in a, in a month, then it's like, that's 
three different people that I'm communicating with to like, you know, everyone has their own brief. Everyone you like, you have to send it back. And there's like so many, so much, so many different moving parts when you're doing those one-off brand deals versus like, um, I did, I did factor this year. It was just amazing. I loved it. I, I eat their food. They're a really good brand and I did it for a year and it was amazing because we're only communicating with, you know, we're communicating with the same people every single month, once a month. And it's just, that makes it really easy. So I think that, you know, TaylorMade, Primo, Factor, Fujikura, those were like the big ones. And they were longer than just, you know, they were the shortest one was six months. So I like those and we're definitely working on, you know, just locking, locking down a few, a few more like year long or even longer partnerships that you know, it's beneficial for us. It's beneficial for them. And it's, it makes, it's just a little cleaner that way. In the last year you signed with Tarot and you just mentioned, obviously that is a massive company that has put a lot into the social world. You know, they've been with four play now for like four or five years investing in you and grant and really like they put you guys on the forefront of their pages. They're posting you guys all the time. Like, you guys are just as, if not more present than a lot of their top athletes, at least online. How has that been like being associated with really one of the biggest like manufacturers in the game? Oh, I mean, it's amazing. I, I, I feel super grateful to be a part of TaylorMade and they have been really, really, really good to work with. And we've, we've done some really cool things because of them. They put us in some really cool spots and, you know, being able to, you know, show up on the TaylorMade page and stuff with me and Grant. It's just, it's really, I just feel super thankful for it. And it was, you know, it's a, it's a, a very long time dream to, to be partnered with them. And now next year, um, the stuff that we have coming out in January is just, it's the best stuff we've ever done with them. And so, I mean, this, I can't wait for this next year. And I really hope that it's something that continues because I love the equipment and the people that, we work with at TaylorMade are just, they're really, really good. And yeah, it's just, I mean, I just feel extremely grateful to be a part of a, a brand like that. Absolutely. I know you can't talk about this very much, but it, obviously you posted photos, Rory, you posted photos with other like, top athletes. And I know for me, the moment I heard you guys were signing with them, the number one thing I was thinking is TaylorMade Media Day, because I know that from foreplay from the last few years, that that's where the content comes with the big hitters. You know, you get these opportunities. I'm sure you can't say much, but is there anything you can tease about about that, those collabs or those interactions, or even just like, you know, going forward, you've now made connections with Rory. Like, how cool is that? You know what I mean? You've met him, you've talked to him, you've played with him, I guess. Like, Yeah, I did stuff with um, Roy, Ricky, and then also Burke Henderson, who plays on the LPGA Tour, and Canadian. Yeah, exactly, Canadian. And uh, it was just, it was amazing. It was, it was some of the best content that I filmed. But the video with Roy will definitely be, um, it'll be probably the number one video on my channel, and hopefully, I mean, mm -hmm. it could even get up. And I, I think it has potential to be like a very big video in the golf space at least next year, but. Mm -hmm. um we're both hitting the new driver which is incredible that was part of the video that we did and it was uh extremely competitive we'll say that and Rory's awesome like that's that's about a whole, how, how much i'll say but and i don't think i can mm -hmm. really say any more than that but Rory was so cool dude mm -hmm. he was like extremely interactive uh we hung out we talked for you know 15 20 minutes he just he was talking to me about his swing he's talking to me about, about my swing and we it's funny because we struggle with like the same thing when it comes to like when mm -hmm. he's not hitting driver well he struggles with the same thing it's a lot in a lot smaller proportions like his dispersion when he's not struggling is a lot less than mine <laughs> but um <laughs> what a great guy and he's a lot shorter than i thought he in in real life than i thought he would be <laughs> like i'm i'm usually the shortest person in a picture and yeah, Rory and Ricky were both shorter than me, which is crazy. Or maybe you're right about the same height. I think. I'm a yeah, that photo than... with Rory was that photo with Rory was great, just because yeah, it was like you two guys were level height and like, I, I just explain to me because I'm still you know I've been playing golf for two years now. I'm still learning about the actual game. Like, how on earth do you two 
hit the ball so far for like you're not I mean you're you look yoked by the way I meant to say that at the beginning of the interview I want to ask you about that in a second but you know sure okay you're jacked but like the the momentum you gain from being six foot four and swinging has to be more but you like you and Rory both hit it the furthest out of anybody ever like and your club head speed is so fast and you heard Trotty talking about it the Taylor May Media Day like how how <laughs> How? <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of it has to do with technique versus just being strong. I mean, there's there's been points when I'm stronger than I am now, but I swing it faster now than I did then because I'm just being I'm just more efficient. And Roy is the best example of all time, even a better example than me because I'm I'm streaky and yeah, I can hit it farther and faster. But Roy does it so consistently, and just his ability to use the ground is really what it comes down to more than a player of his same size that does not know how to use the ground. Um, So learning how to use the ground and yet getting stronger, um, having better balance and creating more like getting your fast twitch muscles, learning how to strengthen those is it definitely helps, but it, it all comes down to efficiency in the golf swing and using the ground properly. So give me the Micah Morris workout routine. What are you doing? Because like, I don't see you post that much. I think I've seen literally one video of you bench pressing like under an awning somewhere. But other than that, like I've never seen any, like you don't post a lot of workout content, but you obviously are lifting or you're just like the most genetic freak ever. But like, what is the, <laughs> what is the workout routine? Right um, now? It varies, but right now I do a lot of like just big muscle groups and then I, I do a lot of explosive stuff. Um, so like box jumps and just anything explosive, like, you know, throwing a medicine ball or stuff like that. I love, I love do, I love bench press, doing bench back and like push and pull basically. I do a lot of that, but I, I like, counter that with a lot of mobility mobility is probably one of the most important things when it comes to the golf swing so every single day i am stretching i'm you know making sure that i'm keeping my muscles healthy because i would love to like i I want to be strong and fast but i don't need to like i'm not at a point to where i want to gain a ton of weight um i mean if i can stay in the mid to upper 170s like i'm pretty happy with that But yeah, just a lot of push pull and then mobility and explosive stuff. And I mean, you can, there's so many different things you can do out there and I couldn't even name everything I do, but that's what it comes down to, to, to just be faster and keep your, keep my body healthy. That's like the most important thing to me. This is my fitness background coming in and my brain from that coming in, but like have you ever worked with like a trainer or is it all just kind of like you figured it out as you go type thing? Um, I have a little bit. Yeah, there's a, it's called hit it great. Now it used to be Joey D fitness, but it's called hit it great now in Jupiter. Um, and there's a guy named Aaron there who I'm good friends with. And he trains a lot of athletes, baseball players, golfers, everything. And I worked with him at the beginning of this year for a while. And he was, he was really, really, really good. Um, and he taught me a lot of, a lot of different things about mobility and stability in the golf swing and how important it is. But at the moment, I'm not necessarily working with anyone, but probably next year I want to kind of get back into actually doing it with someone instead of just doing it on my own because it's, it's easier and it's more fun. (laughs) Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Let's go back to YouTube video wise for 2023 are there any that have stood out to you we've talked a little bit about early 2024 with the taylor may cloud videos those are gonna be super exciting but is there any from 2023 that you look back on you're like that was either like so much fun to film or like this was like a concept i tried and i really liked it and i want to do more of it or like what what were kind of the highlights i guess from some of the 2023 content um probably my my favorite video would have been the the YouTube major at Purcell farms, which was on my channel. Hmm. Uh, I just love that golf course so much. And then obviously doing it with Wes and George Busta Jack Grant and um, Matt, Mac Boucher was in that one, but that was definitely my favorite video of the year. Um, 
when it comes to concepts, I have a few things that I want to do next year that, that it just, it really just in, involves like getting better at golf and like what it takes to get better at golf and like kind of, it's not necessarily like road to pro or whatever you want to call it. It's more, it's more about like a series of videos that takes, takes everyone through the journey of like, if you want to get better at golf, this is what you have to do. And so I've kind of have some different concepts we're bouncing around when it comes to that. Um, but yeah, I think that just the competition stuff is what really, what really gets me going. And so I'm going to, I'm going to really focus in on that next year of, you know, how to play more matches with really good golfers and, and figure out how to make that entertaining. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. Speaking of Grant, you had a big celebration this past week with that guy. He finally tied the knot, got married. That was interesting. I feel like a lot of us, I don't know if you heard my joke about it, but kind of had like Game of Thrones red wedding vibes. I don't know if you <laughs> ever watched that show. No. But we were all kind of sitting back like, I don't know what's going to happen here. But it looked awesome. It would look fun. It looked cordial. Obviously, I texted you immediately when you posted that photo. I was like, you just broke the internet yeah. on a Friday. Like, that's crazy. And then Garrett posted one, like, how was that whole situation? Like seeing you guys together, like that's warmed my heart. I think it warmed the heart of a lot of people. Like how was that whole, um, that whole situation? Yeah, I think it, I think it won the heart of all of YouTube golf, um, <laughs> to a certain degree, which is, you know, it's, it's, I, I honestly, it's cool that people care that much. And I, I love that they do. Um, yeah. but it was, it was good. I mean, me and Garrett have been through a lot together and we had mm -hmm. a great time and i think that that's like that's important for people to understand and he's my cousin and i've never i've always told people like he's someone who i'll always have a ton of appreciation and respect for for what he's done in the youtube golf space but also you know what we did together early on and like his involvement in in that and where i'm in where i'm at today is He'd like he's a huge part of that and i'll never i'll never take that for granted or or deny that and yeah it was it was cool we had a great time and matt was there and me and you know i've me and matt have a great relationship and he's one of my he's one of my favorite people and and so i think that yeah it's just it was it was a great time and i'm i'm glad that everyone like was able to to see that we're you know we can be in the same room together and and hopefully that kind of <laughs> just yeah whatever, whatever however people interpret that like it was good mm -hmm. that's awesome man i mean i i kind of said it as like i think it just put a really nice bow because it was 369 days after the announcement so it's just like a perfect like year later like bow on the whole thing like we're good this is great so i think it was cool to see i think it's cool for the community i think it definitely you know um uh, everything that's that's offline is going to stay offline and that's great and like you guys have stuff that's personal but just like for the community and for you know the the future of youtube golf even just simple stuff like i think people always assumed that yeah like maybe they were never going to be in the same room on camera together again and stuff like that and i think we all want to see you know one day maybe a youtube masters where everyone's there and everyone's playing and everyone you know what i mean and like the ability for stuff like that to happen and i think you know, outside of petty drama or whatever, it's like, it's just good. I think it's good that, you know, the community can, you know, experience those types of things. And I think it must feel so funny to you, man. Just like, yeah, someone you've grown up with your whole life. And all of a sudden, it's just like, hundreds of thousands of people are like, anticipating you guys taking a picture together. Yeah. It must be the I can't imagine. It's like, I, I, I mean, I get it. You guys are like, YouTube famous and golf famous. So you've probably dealt with stuff like this for a while. But like, it must just be the weirdest thing to be like, why do people care so much? You know? Yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> I, I love that people care. Like I said, like the re the reason yeah. that we're where we at is because that we are where we at is, well, I still mess it up. That's, 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 hey, you got it. Right. I know what you're saying. That we are, the reason <laughs> dude, when you said that the other day, I lost my mind. Yeah. <laughs> that was the funniest yeah, thing. Yeah. I have, dys I have <laughs> dyslexia, so I have to really like, the reason we're here is because people care and, you know, that is, it's very important. And, you know, we have to respect that, but also it's like, there's, this is like, we we're real people too. And, 
And there's things that people would probably not understand if they like they haven't been through our experiences like that we have. And so there's things that people would never understand. But yeah, I think it's important to understand that, you know, we're in a we're in a good spot. And yeah, we had a great time at the wedding and we're going to have more good times in the future. That's awesome, man. I've said this to Grant before, but I think it's even more true with you and that you guys both must know that you just have the biggest YouTube golf video just sitting in the palm of your hands. If you ever wanted to do it, a Sunday match, Micah versus Garrett, like instant one of 10, like instant, like million views in 24 hours, probably more. Like, was there any discussion at all? I and don't say if you don't want to, but I'm just, I got to ask as the YouTube golf guy of like that golden egg was just like peaked at just a little bit i mean did we talk like we've did we talk about it yes but that's not like <laughs> <clears throat> yeah we'll see like we we've we've, yeah. all, we've all discussed it and we know what it could be but we'll, we'll see i think that there is there's like there's definitely a possibility of something but i have I have no idea mm -hmm. what it is yet. And I don't think anybody really knows what that is, but I think that for me, like, you know, the relationships are more important than, you know, the however many views you could get. That's because you're a good guy, but I'm about the views. I want to <laughs> see the numbers. I want to see you guys break the internet and just, oh man, it's just cool. I, I think too, it's like, it's so cool that like after all the crap and drama that you guys have all been through and had to deal with that you can just come and just do something like that and just blow up the internet and just make a boatload of money from it. I know that's not why you do it, yeah. but like, it's so cool. And I think, it, I don't know, I think it's a, I think it's a great ace up the sleeve and you guys can wait on it as long as you want. It'll always be there. But I think it's, I think it's cool to even know the tease that one day, you know, it could be coming. So that's super cool, man. What, what going forward then looking to next year, I know we have the tailor made stuff. What else is there that you're just like stoked on that you can share or tease about before we, before I let you go? Um, <clears throat> I'm hoping there will be more things with the tailor made athletes. Um, I'm really excited for that opportunity and especially like our, like doing stuff with them. So they kind of, um, maybe just get a feel for, for us and who we are. And, you know, hopefully it's easier for them to say yes to certain things. And I want to, uh, we have some really cool programs that we're going to play in me and Grant together, which I think is, those are just, they're a lot of fun. We always get to hang out with cool people. I usually learn a lot from, you know, whoever we're playing with, which I just love, but just, I just want to, I just want to get involved with really like high level golfers to a certain degree. And I want to figure out how to integrate that into my channel. Um, and then just honestly, just learning how to have fun again. And I don't know exactly like this, like the style of content or exactly what that's going to be, but um, yeah, I'm just, I'm excited for next year, just growing in every aspect. I think that we're in a really good spot to like wrap this year up and, and put it behind us and, and move forward. That's awesome, man. Well, I appreciate you coming on. I think anyone who's had any sort of, you know, whatever questions or doubts like they I've always said, like, as soon as I've talked to you, it's like you see such a different side than what you see on camera and not saying that, like, you know, you put forward a bad thing on camera, but we're all on some level, not actors, but it's the it's it's a certain persona, mm -hmm. you know, on camera. But I think getting down and seeing who you are as a human, I think people are are really gonna are really relate to it in a lot of ways. You're you're a good dude, you're a normal dude, you're a caring dude. And I think that's gonna serve you really well going forward. So I'm I'm stoked to see what you do both on and off the platform, man. You know I'm a huge fan and I'm always here for uh you know for anything you need or any anytime you want to come on and talk about anything, get a little excitement going. Yeah. I'm your guy. If we need, if we need, if we need to like throw up some new drama or something in the golf space i'll just text you be like yo <laughs> <laughs> yeah here's the team bro here's the team yeah we'll light it that up that was good we'll stuff man. Well, I dude appreciate i appreciate it. you coming yeah. on man thank you brother i appreciate you coming on we'll, we'll chat all later right. all right good. see you buddy